Collider Live on a Friday. Uh, funny thing is, I'm in Houston right now, but it doesn't matter. I'm not. No, you're not. Neither is Roxy. But oh. we are doing a Collider Live, and uh, we're not really live or pre-taped, so we're lying to you. But last week, we, uh, we just got started shooting the shit. It was myself, Roxy, and Riley, and... And uh, we just started getting into old conversations about my time at the WWE and uh, and just work stuff. And, and Roxy and I were supposed to do a one-on-one a long time ago to where she was interviewing me. But you wimped out. I never wimped out. The show got canceled. Oh. Um, so Wham. Yeah. So <laughs> we said, you know what we should do is uh, we have nothing to put on Friday because none of us are really going to be around. Mm-hmm. And we should just do the one-on-one for Friday. So... Here we go. This is what we're going to do. Roxy Roxy is, and I've said this about Roxy when, when I first met her. She, when she came on to host the Schmo show, she did so much research. Mm-hmm. And it was just like her research is like better than anyone you've ever seen as far as what she does. Every time a guest comes in here, she's, she's got the questions. And so I was both uh, excited and, and fearful uh, because it, she said, I need some names of some people that I can talk to. Uh, that Because she didn't know me back then. She didn't know me. In, in the, in, you know, she didn't ask me questions about today and last year or a couple years before, but didn't know me back in the day. So she, I gave her some phone numbers. She conducted a few interviews with people, and she is here today to start that. So without any further ado, Roxy Stryer, the floor is yours. Yeah, you know, yeah. what's great, too, is that it, I needed those numbers because – Things I know to not be true of you are on the internet everywhere. I was starting to do my research online, Google search, you okay. know. What's uh, not true? That you know? So you're married to Mary Jedekin. Oh, is, uh, that, is that out there? Yeah, you guys got married uh, a few years ago. I remember okay. that. Um, and she has one of your babies. Okay. Um, I don't know which of the babies, but right. one of them is hers. And uh, also you're 35. Okay. Um, I actually think 37 was okay. this most recent one. Um, those are some of the things that I found, and I was like, hey, the inter- "So you're saying the internet, internet? You're saying the internet was wrong?" I am wow. saying that. I am wow. actually saying that. But the other thing I usually do for research is I go and look at. We have a lot of people here who do these one-on-one shows, and I noticed you'd never been on Riley Roundtable, right? And I couldn't find you on the Josh Makuka show, and so I was wondering, Christian, you've been doing this for so long. Are you nervous to be the person on the other side who's getting the questions asked of them instead of asking the questions? No, not necessarily. Uh, I was on the Knapsack Files, which uh, mm-hmm. in 2014 I, I did it. It was a two-parter because we went for a long time. Uh, Riley's never asked me to be on his show. And that is so not true. Is that not true? <laughs> maybe maybe it's true. It's so not true. I don't know that that one. But I mean, um, so uh, yeah, I don't know that 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 was with the case of Riley. I don't know what happened. But as far as Knapsack, goes, I'll get you on. Yeah, okay. As far as Knapsack goes, I've done that one, and that was that was a while ago though. But I did something better, which was talk to the people who knew you from when you were younger. And yes. I'm I'm not going to say all of the people that I spoke to, but old roommates, old lovers, old friends, current friends, uh, and everybody seem to have the same idea of you, Christian, which Annoying is that... Annoying human. No, these are the words that kept coming up, that you are goofy, that you are a really good friend, and that you are relentless. Uh, Fact. And I thought that those were pretty amazing. So now that I've complimented you, I'm going to yeah. get into some things I figured that, uh, as much, yeah. <laughs> butter the, you up to then yeah, now, set yeah, it up. Here are the things that they didn't here like about go. Uh, No, I'll, I'll give you credit, though. You you allowed me to call some of your some of your exes uh, and some of them talked about some interesting situations that you Uh-oh. were in. And I, I think it's great that all of them said you were still friends. Yeah. Do you have all of your exes that you're still friends with, or are there some that you just do not talk to anymore? No, I'm pretty, pretty, the, the thing is too, I only think there's been a few, I would say intense, like long relationships that I've been in. So, and I, and I was, that was on my own accord to do it that way. But, uh, I, I've always because I think that from the second I was dating someone, I kind of knew what it was, and even if things ended, most things ended fine. Like I think mm-hmm. there's in particular, I know one person I think that you spoke to that ended fine. It just uh, you know, the people you're either right for each other, or you're not. And I know that you had always said, I'm not going to get married. Right. I'm not going to be that guy. All of your friends from your past all knew that you would one day because they, they saw that in you. And there was one woman I've given you a lot of crap for on the show. Yeah. Uh, in particular, that you she cheated on you. That's what oh, we right. call her, that right. woman. You didn't and speak to her. No, I didn't oh. speak to her, but I spoke to people about her. Okay. 
And an old roommate of yours told me that you were actually going to propose. You were getting ready to propose. Yeah, it was. But it was it was this thing where I, it it wasn't like like my wife today. Um, never a hesitation as far as when I was going to do it or should I do this? Is it, am I supposed to do this? That was never with my wife. It was I'm doing this and I want to do this and I'm going to do it now. I didn't have that with the ex. It was more because we, we were together when I was 16 and then we dated for like three years, three and a half years, broke up, then both went to college, got together after college, were mm-hmm. together for another two or three years for that. And it was, we come from that Queens kind of, oh, you're, you're together at, uh, you know, you've been together that long, 21 years old, 22, you got to get married. That's what you got to yeah. do. And I was out here long enough to where I was like, fuck that. I don't want to because I, cause I'm supposed to. Right. And then, you know, it just, uh, I, it was, it was ne- never because I think that I really knew I got to do this. It was more because I thought that I was supposed to. It was a check the box kind of thing. It was at the best thing. Yeah. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. What did your parents think at the time? Because you're saying that you were supposed to. Is that pressure coming from where you're from or from your family? No, not my family. No, not my family. I think that it was it was more of just like you know because when you grow up in Queens, it's like everybody's. I remember when I was in college, I was still hadn't graduated yet. My buddy Dan. 22 years old and was getting married and I had to fly from college to go to his wedding and people were getting married that soon I think that's way too soon to get married no sorry Cody um, I just think it's too young um, what age did you say I'm like sorry. 22 yeah yeah it's just too young and um, and not for everybody there's some people that you just know it's right and right like again I've, I've, I've met Cody's wife uh, many times and, and you have perfect. a girlfriend who's called into the show before a friend who's a yeah, girl yeah, yeah. who married her partner really young they're still together yes and and Samantha who who we we talked about and and CIA. she's part of that queen yeah she's part of that queen's thing but I think that um and I should take that back a little bit too I think 20 the you can if I think people get married too young sometimes when they're not ready that's more not not that you can't make it work I think that you definitely can I think Samantha has proven that I think Cody has Cody. proven that and but, you weren't ready Nah. Because she was not the right girl or because Christian Both. Harloff was just not? Both. I definitely wasn't ready for that, too, because I didn't, I mean, I still, to this day, I don't think that I've accomplished anything close to what I wanted to accomplish, but it's, uh, it's, it's back then I definitely didn't. But at some point you finally accomplished enough that you felt like you could marry somebody if, if that's the prerequisite. Yeah, but I think, again, it just shows you when it's right because, like, I didn't, I didn't have shit when I was with my wife now. I didn't have anything. Like, I didn't have a, a really a steady job, nothing. I just knew that... It, I, I couldn't let her go. I had to figure out a way to make it work. Mm-hmm. I heard from the ex-roommate as well that he thinks because of that situation, that's why it did take you so long to find Sadie and you kind of uh, dated around a lot. Yeah, 100%. Uh, uh, a lot in there. Do you feel like any of those women were possibly wifey material, but you just were in the wrong place at that time? Um, not wifey, but definitely some people. There were a few in there that that I said that I took a shot and said, "All right, let's let's see where it goes." And 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 to be completely honest, two of those, one of those people that you talked to last night, were that it ended on their on their half to where I was still willing to give it a shot, but one of them in particular, I didn't think. It would ever work out, but I just enjoyed her company a lot and like to to be around and have conversations. Still friends to this day. Um, the other was someone when I first met her. I said I've never done this before. To where I was, we were all outside of this bar, and we were walking. She was smoking a cigarette outside. Um, first of all, that's another. I'm not a big cigarette person. I hate right, cigarettes, right. so this is one thing. But she she was outside smoking cigarettes. My friends were talking to her. Um, and I was just in a mood to where I was like, yeah, I'm just whatever. And I thought she was cute, but my my friends were like, are right, we're gonna go back to? We're, I lived around the block from this bar, and we're gonna go back to our buddy's place and just smoke a joint. She's like, I'm gonna go, like, which is probably pretty stupid on her point to just go random dudes, but lucky enough, good good guys, go back to the place. They're downstairs, and again, I laugh with my buddy about this all the time. I completely cock blocked them because I was I was I went upstairs, and I went to go to bed. I was I'm going to sleep, and they're smoking. And I go, that girl's way too attractive. I was like, there's something about that girl. I want to go down there and I want to talk to her. I'm like, I don't want to, I feel bad if I don't go down there and, and talk to her because I feel like I'm supposed to talk to this girl. And I do. I went downstairs to get her number and we went up dating for, for a while. What's a while? I mean, from my, my standards, it was a while. I think like like three, four months. Uh, that's that, at the time, that's, that's that, a while. That's a while in LA standards. Yeah. I was yeah, yeah. And it was <laughs> back then. And maybe? it was also on and off. It was yeah. on like, we, so it was like three or four. Then we stopped. Then we wind up like right before I started dating 
my um, I started dating my wife. Uh, there was this party that I had, and the ex was there, and she was already dating someone. And I don't know what happened. We were like, wind up kissing or something too. And I knew that was the last time I was gonna see her. And that was and that was while it. she was dating somebody. I think she just started dating the guy. Did you do that often? What hook up with somebody with a boyfriend? I didn't like to. This was, this was, that was not my question. No, I mean it happened. It happened, but it wasn't. But it wasn't. It wasn't a disrespectful thing. This was a different situation because I had a history with, and it was, and no, and it wasn't a disrespect to the guy. It was just a matter of, this was, you know, I knew that she was with the guy. I was hammered, and yeah. I, 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 I took a shot, and it worked that night. But then that was it. And then, then luckily enough, go out with my wife. I think two months later, and that's the end of that story. When mm-hmm. you started going out with your wife, did you think it was just going to be another one of these situations that you had gone through? No, because um, because I, she wouldn't she wouldn't allow me to treat it that way. Mm. To where it's normally what I would do is I would tell I, w- I was when I first asked her out, I was in that mode of well, this is just we'll see what happens. And I told her, "Why don't you just come to one of the shows?" And she's like, "I'm not going to come to one of your shows, and I'm not like, groupy." You know my wife. I, well, I, I, I see her, and I know this story too. Yeah, and I was like, "She got gotcha. you." Yeah, she's like, she's right like, she's like, she's like "You can call me, and we can go out." And I was like, "Because her, her friend's name is Cricket, and and so Chris, I think her real name is Christina, but her Cricket. I, actually, I don't even know. I think that's actually her real name. I don't. But oh, anyway, I know. Cricket's you think awesome. Her real name is Cricket. It might be. Okay. <laughs> but she's but she's awesome. She's the coolest, and I've known her for a long time, and she was friends. And I said, and my phone had died that night. My phone had died, and she said. uh she goes, uh, you know, I said, can I have, I said, you know what, I'm going to get your number from Cricket. And she's like, well, you don't just get my number from me. And I go, my phone's dead. She's like, remember it. And I'm like, I'll try. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I, I wound up getting it from Cricket anyway, um, putting it in the phone. I've told the story about the, the thinking that she's someone else. And then, yeah, you know, and, texting uh, yeah, but she's still, to this day, she, she, she'll bust my chops and go, I'll get your number from Cricket. And so she says to me all the time. Were you nervous at the time? Because it, I think that this playboy attitude, or as some of your friends so kindly called you, man whore. Um, yeah. Do you think that... I know exactly who said that. Do you or think 2006 Harlow. Right. That you were nervous settling down, that that would change your stand-up, that that would change your YouTube, that that would change uh, any of your artistic ability? A hundred percent. And that's kind of... Uh, and, you know, and I'd be lying if I don't think sometimes... Uh, in my head, like you know, the the what ifs. But I'm always I always go back to the fact that I'm I have a wonderful wife. I got two beautiful children. But there's there's a thing that you can't do when you're married and have kids. There's certain ways you you can't push, and things that I know that I would do if I didn't. But also I was very lonely during that time. Also, you know, like I I would push into places that I I could get things done for sure. Um, and I didn't want to lock down anybody because I knew I had to concentrate on me. Plus the ex girlfriend. I took a break from stand-up during that time, and it was a colossal error. I mean, I got involved in the film industry because of it, but during that time, I took a big break in stand-up, and it was it was right as I got got passed at the comedy store. I mean, meaning got approved to be a regular at the comedy store, and I took this huge break, and it was it was really stupid. And I finally got back into it after we broke up, and I was just kind of that's when I hit my stride doing stand-up. Why was that so stupid? Because I took a year off because it wasn't it wasn't like now to where I'm working on I do podcasting and videos and I'd have all this other shit going on. I was, I took a break because she didn't want me to be out at night. Um, and doing the ex-girlfriend. St- yes. Didn't want me to be out at night. So I had to get the, I got a regular job and the regular job was shit. It was like a, it was, it was a runner office manager thing that I was basically the job I gave to Tom down the line. But it was like, I was just kind of reading scripts, smoking pot, playing video games with no outlet. Wait, it wasn't, why- I'm sorry. Why yeah. did she want you to not like not be out at nights? Was it because she wanted to be with you, yeah, or is it because she, wanted... she didn't? Uh, maybe she was worried that you would go somewhere else. Like... Nah, that wasn't it. It was more. Yeah. It was more of the. What are you gonna like? How, how long? She, she again. She, she was a good. I mean, a girl from Queens. It was just she came out support, and she was like, uh, what, "What if it this? It was one of these. I and I. This drives me nuts a lot. I know a lot of people this has happened to. They give like these these kind of ultimatums of it, all right, but if you don't hit within like two years, we got to move. We got to go back to New York. Like and she a, said that too. So, something like along yeah. those lines, and I'm like, that's just not how it works. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna commit to that. But and then I was like, you know what, I'll start to do because to her credit, she was the one who was like, you know, you, if you you talk about film all the time and you're not involved in film at all, so she pushed me down that road to get the internship at Village Roadshow. 
And I did that, but I, sh- uh, you know, in hindsight, I should have balanced both that and stand up and just said, fuck it, and just gone, gone after it. Right? I also think because she was stepping out on you, a lot of times when you have, when you know what you're capable of, you assume somebody else is doing the same. Right. She probably didn't want to, didn't trust you. Maybe, I don't know. Have mm-hmm. you, have you ever stepped out on somebody? Have you cheated? ever cheated? No, that's another reason why, that's another reason why I never got into big committed relationships. Because I like women too much. Um, what does that mean? I just because the thing is, if I'm not committed 100 percent to one woman, uh, I don't know if I can be if I'd want to be committed because I'd want to explore more. But with my wife, I know she's the only one I need. But uh, like, it's no. another thing that a lot of your friends told me is that you were always like brutally honest with women. Yeah. Like this is, I, I want to be super duper clear that this is what my intentions are and not lead you on in any kind of You get yourself in trouble if you don't. I've seen people do it many times, and it's the one thing that if you do, if you say right up top, like even, because that's why, to answer your question earlier, I have great relationships with a lot of people because it's, it's, it just never, at one point that I ever say, I love you when I didn't, or we should be dating when we shouldn't. Mm. Um, Like if I've had people ask me, like, you know, because there was this one particular woman I was dating, and she said, hey, are you seeing anybody else right now? Because we're about to go back into my place. She's like, I have to ask you, are you seeing anyone else right now? And I said, yes, I am. She was asking that because she wanted to know if you guys should use protection or because emotionally she wanted to know. I think both. Know. Okay. I think both. And and I told and, – and I said to her, I said, yes, I am. I didn't hesitate. I just said, yes, I am. And she's like, she's like, well, thank you for being honest, but I can't go in – I can't go in your house right now. I said, I understand. I said, you, you, should, you should go home and then we'll, we'll keep – we'll figure it out. Wound up hanging out again after that, but it was because – I was up front with her, you know, so I think that that's it. People get themselves into trouble when they're not honest. Mm. You said you've never told anybody you love them when you haven't. How many people have you said that to in a romantic sense? Mm, three. So one of them being your wife. One of them being my wife. One of them being, being the, the cheater. Ex, and then a girl in college. Mm. Who was that girl? She was a girl. I, she was the one before my wife, before my wife showed up, I thought she was the one that got away. Um, then obviously once my wife came around, I was like, that's, that's why that didn't work out. So while you were dating the cheater, I, it's so insensitive that I call her that, but I don't know what else to call her. And my, my wife would hear this and say that that's exactly what she calls her. So while you were dating the cheater, you thought that the college girlfriend was the one who got away? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, because that one I blew, I blew, I blew it bad. Um, blew and not in the good way. Not in the good way. No. Uh, What did you do? Well, we, we dated, I was, it was funny because I was the first time coming off of the relationship with the ex, you know, because we dated it th- twice. Right. So it was, there was no relationships and it was, it was funny it paralleled itself because during that time that you just mentioned, the 2000 and kind of end of four up into 2007, there was this period of go, go, go. That was also the period of me in college. Like I didn't, I didn't commit to any relationships or anything too, except this one girl, she was from Connecticut. Um, my friend introduced me to her and we hit it off and it was just, it was just whirlwind and it was great, but it was young, um, pr- not pressured, but like I want, I knew, like I knew how much, like I was like, I'm into this girl and I wanted a, I wanted a commitment from it. I did. And she, she did, but she was, it felt, but it was more of like, uh, let's just, let's take it easy type of thing. Like, but I don't understand how you blew it though. You were just coming off too strong. I think I think because I was I was trying to I was trying to move the the relationship a lot faster at a, we're both I mean I was 20 I was 20 and she was 19 and I was just trying to boom because I I had known a 3 year relationship that's what I had known so I'm like we both like each other then that's it let's start dating nobody else that's it and we're in college and she's like let's just take it easy and I didn't I didn't handle it well um she's and then at one point she was just like that's uh we should stop and it and I was Devastated. I mean, crushed. Started drinking bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like it was. What it, does starting drinking bad look like for Christian? Um, normally, question. remember how you said, Riley? You said you said like you know you see me as a happy drunk, mm-hmm. and everyone's like, anytime I drink, I'm yeah. goofy and silly and everything too. And then McCuga and I both said at one point, you know, there's only been one time in my life where I've been an angry drunk, and that was it. Because when you're drinking to just drink your problems away, and you have this kind of embarrassment this hurt the shame it was it was bad and i was just it was it was just a lot of moping my mom said it too she said you you just been uh, what was the word she used mooning over this girl get out snap out of it had had she met her 
Um, no, she didn't because she was. That was another thing that kind of kicked my ass. Like I was, I was supposed to bring her back home for a Christmas break, but we broke up right beforehand. So it just it just, and we we're going to go to like Broadway plays and do this whole thing and. Like and she and again it was just too much and I got it and and you you look back at it later on I know like everything that I did was wrong and it, it helped me later on down the line I remember being in another relationship going don't pull that thing again just let it go and I did and I wound up because of that being able to patch up with whoever the the person I was dating at the time well not mm. too big of a patch then but not big it of a patch a but but, but it, yeah but it was just something along the lines of where you you you. Pay attention to past mistakes, and you don't want to do you want to do it again because it was it was unfair to her because I was just like you know I would see her and, and it just it it would she's trying to have fun at parties and I want to talk about it again yeah and it's just, have it's, you spoken to her since then we're Facebook friends and stuff too but she's married she's got she's got kids but she's uh she's um yeah she was a sweetheart of a girl she's very nice smart cool cool girl but like I said it was I thought that, and everything happens for a reason because I, I up until like you know whatever it was. 10, 10, 15 years ago, I said that was the one, and then I met my wife, and I was like, okay, well, that was the reason. That was the reason why all that happened because you're supposed to meet your wife. If you hadn't met your wife, did you think you were going to try to give it another shot with her? Yeah. Nah, she was. <coughs> she went up marrying like I think her uh, her college sweetheart and or her uh, high school sweetheart mm. had a bunch of beautiful kids and and moved on. So. You mentioned your mom a couple of times, yeah. and most of the people I spoke to also mentioned your mom, saying how important it was for you to have a great relationship with her always. And uh, if you were going to introduce somebody to her, you needed to. That was a really big deal to you. Right. What does that come from? Did you, is your mom like your number one? Were you always just concerned how she viewed you? I had, and and she and she's probably listening to this. She uh, and and she wouldn't she wouldn't argue with this. My my mom and I had a very um, different or, or, or kind of a hard relationship you know hard relationship growing um, up yeah because my mom and speaking of my mom and my dad married very young my mom mm. was 25 when she had me so um i mean that's and, and were the, you the first or i was the first of the three boys yes okay. and so that was um i always i always i don't think she got enough credit for how young she was having three children you know and and you don't you don't pay any attention to that when you're when you're younger you just know oh, that's my mom she's doing mm -hmm. her thing and then my, my parents divorced when I was like, or split up when I was ten, so she had us, and and I always had a very strong relationship with my dad. And did they have joint custody? Um, that was part of the big problem. It was went back and forth, and and one of the things I think my mom felt I was I don't even know how old I was. I was maybe twelve or thirteen. I can't remember, but we were at court or something like that, and uh, the judge asked me something along the lines of, of where I wanted to be or whatever it, what it was, and and I think that. Had I said with my mom that I think she would have gotten uh, a little more money for the for custody and things of that nature and uh, whatever it was, I don't I don't remember the specifics of it to be honest. And I and I said my dad, and so I think she was always hurt by that because she was the one who was raising me, she was having me go to school. I would see my dad on the weekends, and and so my mom was uh, she was definitely hurt by it. And Why I, did you say that? Wanted to be with my dad. Um, my my mom was my mom uh, had was like some you know again raising three boys and. Not with my my dad anymore, and was uh, had a lot of anger in her too, and has, and has said as much to me and since then. But didn't and took it out of me sometimes, and I didn't know how to deal with that. And and my dad was the one where I would go and we'd have a lot of fun movies and and. Um, Did your two brothers feel the same way? Did they? No, no. My brothers, my brothers were definitely a lot closer. They were younger during during that time, so my my brothers had a. Uh, had a very good relationship with my with my mom, and still do. And I, I have a very good relationship with my mother today. Um, but it, it it took a while for us to get there. And it I think it even when I got I think it was really when I started college. Once I was really out of because I, I was I lived at the house for a little bit. Then I lived with my dad. Then I went back and I lived with my mom. And then I just said I'm getting I'm going to college. I went to college from uh, New Rochelle in Iona. Lived there for the first year. And I, I I think that was the best relationship I had with my mom at the time for for a long time because. Both had our space. She kind of respected me. She, she respected me as an adult, and and getting out. And she always, she always, always said that she, she, she. I mean, even even today, she, she admires the way that I kind of handle myself. That I do things. I put things together, and a lot of that I get from her. Anyway, she's a she's a. I mean, she's a bull. She's a bull. I mean, mm -hmm. the, she raised three kids, um, and she she does things her way a lot of the times. So maybe well, you don't want to agree with it or. Or sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Uh, but she's she she gets it done. 
Were you aware of why your parents split at that age? Was that an open conversation of what yeah. was happening, why it was happening? Yeah, just things, just uh, things. Just didn't, I won't go too deep into that, but because um, you know they're not they're not here to talk about. More just what was your level of awareness of? I was pretty aware of it, and, my, and that was one of the things too. My mom made me pretty aware of everything go, going down, and my you know my dad would try to not talk about it as much, but um, but yeah, it was I was very aware because my. I went from being a kind of a pretty, I was pretty good in school for up until like the fourth or fifth grade. And then after they split, it was all about just making everybody laugh and trying to mm. get the attention that came from probably not having the family unit that I yeah. thought I had. And did you make your little brothers laugh a lot? Was that definitely yeah for sure? Like um, Brian, um, what is my is is my brother who. Um, Who's, who's still with us today? Um, and Brian, um, Brian, and I got along very well. We were—he was just kind of like my little sidekick for a long time. Kevin was his, Kevin was his own spirit from the second he he kind of came. He did did his own thing. Was, but um, but we when the three of us kind of got together, it was funny because Kevin and I would do these things. We 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 did, we did had this road trip, and we'd go to Lake George in New York, and we were driving. And I remember Brian fell asleep in the back. we this. Car, car that we had and Brian myself and Kevin were all in the back but Brian Brian fell asleep so Kevin and I hooked his pants with these two hooks that they have like you know those those, those, those like the strings with the little hooks on them yeah and when we we put him on the side and he tried to get up and he was like kind of bouncing from the side it's probably very dangerous but it was uh, <laughs> back and forth and we would just play these little pranks on him Kevin was, Kevin was a prankster I was a prankster and we would we would we would get along uh that way and video games played a lot of video games so we're, did you guys never fight growing up, the three of you? Oh, or? fought all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I was I was six, five and a half, five and a half years older. Than who, Brian? Or Both. Kevin? They were fraternal twins. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, so they. I mean, you know, th- they were very tight, obviously, because twins just have that bond. Um, was that hard for when, me? Yeah, I I can only imagine if you had twin siblings. No, because I was still kind of the leader of the pack when I was younger. So when I, but the thing is, you know, once I left the house, they were they were a lot younger than me, you know. So when I was like, because I went to live with my dad by myself when I was probably like fifteen, they were like ten. So right, that was the first time. And they lived with your mom. They lived with my mom all the way Yeah, and then I went back to live with my mom for my senior year in high school. So I was like about seventeen, and they were they were like twelve. And did you move back because you wanted to or because? I moved back because I was with the ex-girlfriend and I wanted to be closer. She was, I mean, went closer by like 19 blocks, you know, as opposed mm. to. Big difference. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to whatever it was, 20 minutes away. Uh, but yeah, I moved back and it was, and I also thought that it just, my dad, my dad was living in like a little apartment at the time because he was trying to get back on his feet from the divorce and everything too. And, and so it was, it was good and it was fine, but I wanted, I wanted to be, and with my circle of friends I was running with and. Yeah, I was a silly kid at that point also. So Was he your dad dating at all? You know, the answer is probably yes, but I with both my mom and my dad, I never really saw like I never really saw a lot of their uh people that they were dating. Like my, my I think my mom I think my mom was just sick of it at the end of it too. She she's just like, yeah, I don't need it. I don't need them. I, I saw so much uh that we had in common, same age, divorced yeah. uh, from my parents, same kind of feelings. But not there. Like I was, you, I was you saw very the, aware yeah. of of the dating no. and this and that. Yeah, it's funny. Which was good. I mean, it, right? It, no, it it's, fine it's healthy. Me. I wish the yeah. two of them would. Both, neither one of them got remarried. Mm. Neither one of them. And mm. like my, I've seen I've a couple of my dad's. No, maybe even one. Just one of my dad's uh, ex girlfriends now. Because and this was like probably when my wife met her. It was probably like five, ten years ago, whatever it was. But my my mom. No, she's she's dated. Some people, but she kind of kept it quiet from us. I think she was the same type of thing to where she, she's not going to bring anybody around unless it was like real. And there's nothing that ever kind of popped up that was real. So she never brought it around us. There's those families who, after they get divorced, they still like will go on vacations together or okay, going to dinner together. Was that not your no, situation? My, my parents, unfortunately, it, um, they just they, they just do not they do not get along. See eye to eye, and I would uh, still to this day. Yeah, and I put it I put it more on my dad than I put it on my mom. On that, my mom's tried uh, towards the last couple of years has tried, but um, but you know my dad, my dad is my dad. Just like it's it's chapters closed. Let's move on. Did you and your brothers kind of ever talk about the divorce or growing up or who was living where or because you were so much older, could you not even relate to what they were going yeah, through? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. I 
and this is I don't this is maybe a sad thing. I have no idea. And I talk, I said this to my wife recently. I don't know if I said this on the air, but I said definitely said it to my mother. I don't remember a lot. I blocked out a lot of stuff from like the time I was from like two to like uh, I don't know, maybe twelve. There's a lot of stuff inside there. I don't really remember. Why I mean, do you think that is? I don't know. I don't really know. I, mean, I thought about it, if there's anything inside of that, that that made it go away. But like, I mean, there's certain memories that pop up, you know. But for the most part. I don't really remember a lot of stuff. I don't. I don't really have a lot of memories of my parents together at all. Yeah. And do it, yeah. do your brothers have you? Did you ever ask? My brother. Well, my brother Brian is hysterical because like we 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 bust his chomps about this all the time. Where he he's like, yeah, hey, I remember that. Like, you were one. Yeah, but well, I remember. Like, yeah, <laughs> he does it a lot. He does do you believe it? Sometimes, but it's hard because we and he, and, he, and he'll if he hears this, he's like, exaggerating. I do remember. I do remember. He's he's got the biggest heart. Out of anybody that you'll ever meet, he's very passionate, very. Um, and, and this is not an insult; he's emotional. And but he's but he's got, he has the biggest heart that you'll ever see on a human being. Hmm. How would you have described the differences between you and your two brothers then? So if he was like a little more emotional yeah. and had the heart, which one were you? And uh, well, what Kevin, was Kevin? Kevin was pretty emotional, also. Kevin, I, 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 Kevin and I were way more similar than, than Brian and I for sure. Um, In and, what ways? Both, like he, he was a very talented musician. Um, mm-hmm. Not that I'm a talented musician, but like, <laughs> but, but similar, but similar as far as t- is the way that he would, kind of would creative, yeah, and dive into his work, you know. And, and he was goofy. He was uh, he was very silly, um, and uh, liked a lot of the same things. And we just we just we just in conversation, we like the way that he kind of looked at life. We we went down that road a lot together, and I think it's probably one of the reasons too. Sometimes we we bumped heads because we were so similar. You know. I didn't know that you guys did bump heads. Sometimes when we were when we were younger, but it was one of those things to where just I think that because Brian and I were so close when we were younger, and it was one of those things where Kevin was just kind of always off doing his own thing, and not with Brian. I mean, they 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 had a tight relationship, but like he and I, it was just like oh, he's my older brother, you know. And the fact that I was out, I, I left New York when I was like seventeen, eighteen, and then they they stayed in New York for a long time. And did your relationship drastically change with them when you moved 3,000 miles away? Yeah. Or did you guys, because it was a different time, you're not texting right. and doing yeah, all that. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was different because, you know, they were pretty much just doing their thing and I was off on my adventure trying to figure it out. Because I've told the story many times about why I wanted to come to L.A. Because I, when I was 12 or 13, 12, my mom took me and my brothers to San Diego uh, we spent three weeks at my friend's pl- my friend's place. My friend who wasn't there was in New York, but we stayed with his mom and his sister, and it changed my 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 look in life. And I said, "This is where I'm gonna end up in California somehow." And I always kept that in my head, and I knew eventually I would get to Los Angeles some way or another because of that trip. Because what inside you told you that? I felt like a different person. I was after. After my parents got divorced, I was this very sad kid, um, angry, um, didn't really, you know, girls weren't very interested in me because I had this, it was, I, I was like a young looking kid, you know, even what when do you I, mean? So when I was it's baby face, yeah, baby face, the hair, like it was just like it was, it was the goofball that like hmm. wasn't really that was the class clown cracking jokes with people, and it was just like girls didn't take. They took the Matt Dillon, you know, they, they took Matt Dillon and, and Sam and all these. That was those were the guys that were like the the main guy. So I was that type of thing. Like that that got to me. Like there's all these things I wanted to do, and and then I got to San Diego for those three weeks, and I was like the cool New York kid. Mm-hmm. And the girls wanted to talk to me, and I was, and all these things were happening, and I was like, "This is like a different universe. I mean, this is the greatest." Well, it mm-hmm. sounds like you definitely didn't have trouble with the women when you when you got out here and when you were doing stand up. Right. Was part of the reason you were drawn to stand up because of the lifestyle surrounding it? Like the guys making the jokes get yeah. all the ladies. Um, no, because that's not really what it, what the, that's not what's sold to you. That's not the bill of goods that sold. It's actually the difference. Some of the biggest jokes were that. Can Comedians aren't the ones that usually get the ladies. Musicians are, you know. Um, I don't know. I, it, the over and over again quote was: Christian could have anybody he wanted. All of your friends said, if a girl came, if you got her to your show, you were golden. If right. she saw you perform, then you were in. Well, I started to learn how to use it because it wasn't a matter of trying to impress the girl as much as just go and do what you do. And if she likes the humor, then then you're good. And it's a lot easier than 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 just the because then the conversation comes a lot easier after the set. But no, that's not why I got into it, because 
like I said, in college, I wasn't doing. Well, I was doing stand up ish, but not 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 for like a career. I'd say that college was really where I started to realize and kind of come to my own. Go, oh, that when I just am myself and just kind of have conversations, I do pretty well with with women because that's it's just having conversations in the honesty. You know, like that that's where it began in college, and then and then stand up definitely helped a lot. What did your, I, I don't know if it was a conversation as yeah. clear as some other people's, but when you told your parents, like, I'm not going to be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is, I'm going to be right. stand-up comedian or something in this space, how did they take that? Yeah, they, they knew. They they, knew you gonna, didn't they, have to tell they them? Knew, they knew I was going to be a doctor. Um, <laughs> you know, um, my, my dad has, it was always, it was always just do, if you're going to do it, just do it and do it at 100%. Like he, he never, never, like he would never. And I always ask this question when I do one on ones, you know, because it's so I'm always curious because I, it comes from a place of well, my parents, my my dad specifically was, if that's what you wanted to do it, but just do it the best that you can do it. And my mom, my mom actually, it's funny now. Now, um, she's the most involved in any of my careers than she's ever been. She checks, she checks my tweets all the time to find out what's going on. She does she, she had, have Twitter. She uh, she doesn't have a Twitter account, but she reads people's tweets. Like so, she'll Google your Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She wants to and she wants to read what's going on. That's how she finds the links to the shows. And she's she's very she's caught up on like where the showdown's going. And she's very involved. She doesn't totally get it all the way through, but she tries her hardest. And she's always asking, asking questions. We have the best relationship now, I think, that we ever have. And one of those things is that just because, uh, you know, she's just uh, we we've we've both just kind of come to terms that it was. We both were just very different people back then. I also have to assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but I had a, a very tumultuous relationship with my family. Um, and then when my mom passed away, right. it changed everything. Uh, it took a minute to, but you kind of start mending things that you're realizing might not always be there. Sure. Do you feel like that has impacted you and your mom's relationship? I can understand that where that where that that would come into play, but, but um, no. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It, it it certainly has made it stronger. Um, but we were already mended before my brother had passed, for sure. Um, and she had, we both made made strides to say, "Look, this is what I did wrong back then. This is what I did wrong back then. Um, let's get over it. There's other things going on right now, and let's just let's just talk." You know, because what my, did you say you had done wrong? I mean, I think the same. I think I could have handled um, certain. Just you know, being a being a kid that was just. Uh, kind of an angry kid and, and maybe just certain ways just could have expressed myself better and had conversations and, and, and things of that nature and and just, you know, overall just to, just had better open communication with her. Now uh, that you have kids of your own, how do you, when, when they are acting like you or dissimilar, uh, do you think about how you were parented and you try to either do the opposite do the same thing do you think about how you were parented well you yeah know? well my my mom actually after I, sh I i facetimed her with uh my two kids and they were both just really acting up so my mother just starts cracking up she's like i told you this day would come yeah. she's like and i love it just like i told you one day one day you're gonna have kids just like you and she's cracking up and she loved it and it was it was funny <laughs> she's just cracking up do you think they are similar to you my oldest for sure yeah, my oldest is definitely. I mean, she's messy like me. That's a that's a definite. Um, what does that mean? Like throws her clothes on the floor, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. She's she's messy and she's just. But she's also pretty much just. She's she's when she wants to get something done, she gets it done, right? Mm. But she's also she's a goofball. She's really a funny kid, very funny kid. Mm. Um, and we just yeah, we, I think it's one of the, we get along very well because we're we're very similar. Was there a big learning curve because you grow up with where you were living at your dad's too, and you've got the two brothers, yeah. uh, feels very male dominant, and then you have two daughters. Yeah. Was there a big like, oh gosh, how do I deal with women in this kind of way? Kind, Little women? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Because I think that what the the funny thing though too is my dad said it forever up until so I have a I have a. Um, she, she almost she's uh my not my niece yeah my, not my niece she's my what's oh, happening she's, I'm trying to figure out what she's just <laughs> my 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 dad's uh youngest brother is my uncle yeah his kids who I guess is my would be like second my second cousin, cousin. second yeah. cousin second cousin yeah, yeah. she was just she's very much way younger than me I mean she was she's was at my wedding she was like four oh, you okay. know so like super young but I saw I always look at her as my niece even though she's my second cousin mm -hmm. right um 
And anyway, so she was the first girl, Harloff girl born, and I think it's something like 85 years or something. They were all boys. So Jeez. we just we just thought we're getting boys. Like that my first was gonna be a boy. And then I I said I said it, I was like, we're not gonna have a girl. We I told my wife, I'm like, we Harloffs don't have girls. And then I'll never forget my mother in law. It's a baby girl. Wait, you didn't you didn't find out the sex until the baby came out? No, no, no. When we had when we had oh. the uh, we, when they told us what it was, but okay. my mother in law was there and she said it's a baby girl. And I was like, wow. Um, and then <laughs> then the second one was, was my that wa- a moment of panic for you or no. excitement? Well, yeah, it was more excitement because I was just it, kid's a kid, you know. And it's like, yeah. And when my wife thought I was going to be bummed the second time because we we thought we were going to have a boy the second time. And when we didn't, she was. I think she was looking at me to be bummed about it, and I wasn't. I wasn't. What bummed. are you gonna do? Be bummed out loud? Yeah. Some people do. Oh, some some guy. people some people do, and they can see it. Like you, because you, my wife and I know each other so well that if I even if I was just like, no, no, absolutely, it's us. She would know, right? But I was, and and I, and to be honest, I thought that I was gonna be bummed, and I wasn't. And I and I probably under, I probably know now why. I mean I, that both my kids are just, and I, every parent says this, but both both my kids are just like they're incredible. Like, mm. They're really great. I what I noticed about your daughter too is that she's into all the things you're into because right. she wants to watch Star Wars and Schmo Down and I, so what really difference would it have made if she it was a boy versus a girl? That's what I said. I said I said I think I got my little boy to be honest. I don't think yeah. I don't think my youngest is gonna be like my oldest when it comes to this stuff. I might be wrong. What Maybe. makes you say that? I don't know. It just feels different. Like she's. My 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 oldest is like a bulldog and just kind of runs right. through, and my the other one's just a little dainty and just kind of doing the little dance. And my my oldest is definitely a tomboy, and 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 it's like she just feels like my little like and you know, whatever, just, you know, just just very similar things. But it's interesting because your wife is not the same, doesn't have the same interests as you either, at all. and is not like that at all. And uh, that's why I think she's gonna be more like my wife. So, yeah. but were, <coughs> was that at first when you met her? And I can only picture you guys on your first few dates, yeah. and you're sitting there and you're like, "But what did you think of Star Wars?" And yeah, she's I like, bring, "I don't care." I didn't bring up Star Wars. Um, you're trying to be smoother than that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, cause <laughs> it was also because like, you know, when you're also when you're in the space, you run in this. And I also thought too, and it, and it's true. Um, I'm glad I was never single in this space, especially today um you never you, it's just because you don't you just don't know when you're working with people too because there are a lot of there are a lot of attractive people in the space in general too mm-hmm. so it's like you start dating what what do you what do you it's, it's, god forbid like you know you you especially when i was in the position i was at collider and it's like let's say that i was you start dating someone and it's like and uh, it didn't work i'm not hosting well, you you said this about me, and maybe it comes out on the air, and it's just sloppy because everybody, yeah. so it's, everybody's public. You know oh, what I mean? It's been really challenging. That's I, what I'm saying. I totally yeah. know. Yeah, what you, you mean. know what I mean for, yeah. for sure. You you've lived in it, so it's so that that was one of the that's one of the main reasons I'm glad that it was just a different time in general. I wasn't in that space at all. When so I met you my wife. hadn't started YouTube when you met your wife. There was no Mark and I. Mark and I had done a f- like maybe a couple of television reviews for current TV at the time. That yeah. it, there was no there was no objective to start a YouTube channel or any of that stuff when when my wife and I started dating I was still doing stand up uh, regularly. On a previous, uh, I guess it's not a one on one, but episode of Collider Live, we talked a lot about your career and how you got to right. uh, Schmoes. But I wanted to before we did this interview reach out to some of the people that you brought in on Schmoes and and see if they had any great stories for me okay. or, or questions to ask you. And I <laughs> and. I'm going to have to have you interpret what some of these mean because I don't know. Finstock? Uh, well, okay. I'll start with his. Okay. Uh, Finstock <laughs> wants me to ask you why he calls you CK. CK. Yeah, because one of those calls me crazy Christian. I know. So, what, yeah. so where does that come from? Actually, it stems from his uh, – it stems from Riley's Halloween party. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was. This is and, and what like I said, year are we talking? This is 2005. So so this is you prime. This prime time. Right before it goes prime. Right before it goes prime. Because, okay. Yeah. Because this is actually to go back like to where I talked about my angry time in college. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. There was that slight. It was. It was after the girl had left. Right. Uh, the and, and the one who got away but didn't. No, 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 no. After the after the the, the, the relationship. Cheater. Yeah, sure. The cheater. Oh. After she goes back, real, her real name, yeah. cheater. <laughs> after she goes back, after she went back to New York, um, then I went into this path to where it was more for that full year, like 2005. It was more of a. Uh, I don't want to. It was it was it was a darker place. I was in a darker place for sure. But I, I got myself a, a really good job, and I was just kind of dating. 
but like still really uh, lonely. You Are know? you talking darker drugs? No, darker? no, no, not drugs. Just uh, ang- anger. Just and internally. Dark. Internally, like anger. But my it was my stand up was starting to get great. Like we talked about with with Dane the other day. Like it was my stand up at that point was great. Um, was starting to get really good. I was getting back into the comedy store. I was getting back on on stage after taking that break from when she was in town, just go, and going at it and doing well. But I was I was angry. So it, and then and if some drinking came into play, you know, it's like it was. It was one of these nights. So this girl that I was seeing at the time um, made me a costume, this kissing booth costume. So now we're back in 2005, right? 2005, party. right before. Mm-hmm. She didn't go to the party. She just made this for me. And there's another girl I was very honest with, too. So, so I remember making this. She made you your Halloween costume, and yeah. you didn't invite her to the party. I did. She she just didn't. She was going to something else. Oh. We were, we were just kind of like hooking up, and she just did it for a favor. We wound up hooking up at her place. She made the thing for me, and then... I went off and she said she she knew I was probably going to go and she made me a kissing booth co- costume so she knew what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um but I got Weird. there. But I got there <laughs> um and I went to this party and I remember this that there was this a buddy of mine who my buddy was with now but we were always kind of like feuding a little bit. Um and there was this girl that I was interested in and I I'm like I'm going to make a play for her. And he was a very good looking guy, right? And he and he went up taking her and he knew that I he knew that I was going to make a play at her but he decided he was going to do it takes her home. And I just, in my head, just started going off in this woe is me kind of self-pity thing that I was doing because I was drinking. You went to the dark side. I went to the dark side. So cut to the end of the night. Riley comes out. He goes, what are you doing, man? And I'm s- jumping up, stomping on my on my uh, my, my costume, kicking Kick, it. Kicking, kicking it, it down What are you Blackburn. wearing then? Well, it was, I had, I had a, like, something like this okay. on underneath it. But it was funny. It, it was, was hysterical. Funny. It was funny because I was because I was doing because I was always able to kind of throw even on stage throw the anger with the humor and do the same thing and people were cracking up while I was doing it and I was leaning into the, the humor of it but I was still kicking it and then and then uh, and Dagnino started saying CK crazy, crazy Christian take it easy take it easy and then so he would say CK and he said because he's like caught you that one time kicking rocks and so he, so he called me CK forever yeah and then he stuff. said he started calling you Norman Bates. He didn't call me Norman Bates. That was that came that came from that, that came from uh, from college. My buddy Jeff. Came. Not a great nickname to have. No, he called me Norm because of the, I told you because going going drink. That's why I don't drink when I'm angry. Okay. Because that's oh, why. Yeah. Yeah, cause you Jeff gave you a bears. bad one. All right, yeah. so I have I have more for you. I love this. Uh, Ken wants to know mm. what really happened in that shower. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no idea. I have, I no, have idea no idea what, what that means. This means either. <laughs> He's laughing right now. He is laughing his ass off. Because <laughs> I need to know what happened in that <laughs> show. I do too. I'm going to say no comment. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> That's a, All right. a, well, I, a story I'll find out. for a different He's laughing. time. He is laughing his ass off right now. Uh, Son of a bitch. Go buy his uh, book. I don't even know. I'm going to go text I don't you understand what, what that did is. What happened in that shower? No. What happened? <laughs> Which shower? Nothing. Okay. All right. I guess. Uh, uh Brett, uh, being a parent himself, said try to get him to say which one of his kids is his favorite. Yeah, yeah. that's such a Brett. It's impossible. You can't do it? Do, no, it I don't is have, it inside I, I, you, but you won't say it out no, loud? No, no. It really isn't. It really isn't. I mean, and it's, and it's, and I don't know, maybe he can speak on this more, like once they get older, maybe, but like, you know, my, my oldest has so many things that she's, that's just like, I can't wait to see her when I come home, what she's going to say, how she's going to crack me up. And then I, every single time I get home, you see that little ET trot of the <laughs> year and a half old, she comes off, da da. You know, it's like, so I, there's, there's no, there's no answer. There really is no answer. Do you think that your parents had a favorite? Um, <laughs> not, I mean, maybe. I mean, I, I, maybe I, for sure. I mean, were you not it? Don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, I see. I don't know about a favorite though. I think. I think. I think it's a matter of like who's who's who's. If you say like you got who's got the championship right now, like you know, there would be. Right. Like I probably had the championship for my dad for a while, you know, and then and then, you know, there whether Brian or Kevin would take would take the mantle in certain aspects for sure. I definitely didn't have the title a lot for my mom. Because mm-hmm. of the stuff we were going through, and I think you know Brian and Kevin probably switched that back and forth. But I think uh, th- that changes. You know? Okay, this one uh, you're, you're off the hook a little on here because okay. this is not anything about showers. Uh, Ella says that you're putting on a comedy show at a club. It's yeah. sold out Saturday night, and you have four spots: the host, the guest set, uh, feature act, and a headliner. You can pick any comic ever to fill those spots. Who are you taking? Is he saying, like are they saying out of friends? <coughs> no, no, or no. Like, like, what do you want to see? Oh, like so all-time greats. Yeah, yeah. 
give me so as a host. Yep, you need the host, you need the guest set, you need a feature act, and you need a headliner. A headliner, I'm going George Carlin. I mean, there's no, there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, and a guest spot just to see them, just to see them on the same show together. Richard Pryor. Okay. Um, hosting. Actually, Tina Fey and, uh, and and Amy Poehler, I'd have host this whole thing for sure. Uh, that's a true. That, that's that's true because I think they're some of the best hosts, and I think they lighten up yeah, the, the whole entire room. And then what was? And then a guest spot, uh, feature. Yeah, the feature. Who's the feature? Dave Chappelle. Really? Interesting. Yeah. You want to hear his? Yeah. Host Brody Stevens. Yeah. Guest set Rodney Dangerfield. It's good. Mm. Feature uh, Dave Attell. Uh, David, he loves Dave Attell. Dave Attell yeah. and headliner Chris Rock. Yeah, it's all good. All, all good ones too. It's Brody Stevens is a good call. Shit, Brody's good. Yeah, Brody's good. Do you miss it, Brody, or, or stand no, up? No, that was a good time to ask a question. Yeah. I meant stand up. Um, y- yeah, I, it's it's just the thing is, it's uh, it, it's the training of it. The way that I did it back then, I just don't do it. I couldn't do it the same way. The way they used to train for sets and, and get ready for sets. And if you could, would you be doing it now? Probably. And to be honest, there are times that I feel like I should have just stuck with that and not done this. Um, what are, when you say times, how often is that, and what is the actual thought going through your head? Well, the, the problem is, it's just I don't. There, there are a lot of comedians that do it. I just don't know how to. I wouldn't know how to balance because of the way that I used to do it. I don't know how to balance family with stand up because you got to. I, I feel, and like, again, there are tons of comedians that are able to, to balance family and stand up. I just I feel the way that I have to do it is completely be selfish and focus just on me. Mm. And this is this job is easier to do, and it's even then. It's uh, it's it's hard to uh, to balance, but it's easier to balance family than stand up is because stand up I got to be just about me and getting the next set and doing this and traveling and and. Um, but I feel like with Schmodown, I mean, could stand up be more hours than that? Um, you put so much time into it. I do, but it's it's also it's night it's it's nighttime. It's it's there's something else. I mean. Is it traveling too? I mean, it's like yeah, I look I at Ellis. He's he's gone almost yeah, every week. Yeah. But he's now gone. you're gone all the time too for Schmodown. Only, I mean, only like yeah, once a month. A bit like, like once, Ellis, definitely more. Yeah, you Ellis, know? I'm like once a month, and it's I couldn't and, imagine but, that. But with it's a also family. It's, it's hanging. But it's, it's it's if I was to get back into it, first of all, I think it's more of a young man's game if you're not doing it all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like there's a reason why Ellis looks like a wizard when he's up there because he's he's gone. B- besides the fact that he's a brilliant, he's got a brilliant mind, but the fact that he's you know people don't understand when you put in this the time that he puts in to be that comfortable. It's like it's like going in, it's like going into it's like eating for him because he's so used to it now. It's like that's the rhythm I was on for a long time. Is that's every okay? What am I doing now? I'm doing this as opposed to when I'm going to be eating dinner at 7:30. I'm doing a set, and that's the same thing. Oh, I can make put a fork to my mouth and eat. Oh, then I'm using that, I'm using my hand gesture to make that person right there. They're going to laugh on that joke because I've been doing that every night. And it's just the the, men, the mental kind of capacity that you have that you know and the comfortability, and you become like a Jedi up there, like being able to kind of move and, and maneuver. People don't understand that. Oh, it's just you trying to be funny on stage. It's there's a there's a there's a science to it. Yeah, and. And, and to get back, that would take a while to get back into. Now, I could go and have a set somewhere um, in front of a Collider Live audience or in front of a Schmoes audience and do and do well. Because when I get... You mean tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? I'd have to put the work in, obviously. But but it's a bit... I feel like it's a bit of a cheat. Because if I go, because if I go up, they're going to go, okay... Great, we get to see Christian's gonna go up and he's gonna do stand up. So they're gonna be they're gonna they're gonna be kind up top to me to say, What do you got? And if I have a good set for seven or eight minutes, you're great, you should get back into it. But that's the that's the 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 the, the ruse. Be- but so what if it's a cheat? Well, it's fine, but it's just it's just it's just a ruse because the thing is, it's not a matter of it, I I wouldn't want it to have be some false thing of like oh you should get back into this and do this because that's not a a comedy store set at one in the morning in front of thirteen people. That's not a comedy store set after Joe Rogan's just gone up and crushed, and now you got to go up. Like that's that's the grind you got to put yourself into. That's what I was doing. That I loved doing. I loved challenging myself back then. But that's not the that's not the mental state I'm in right now. So there, I'm sure a million reasons. But what do you attribute the main reason to why you stopped then? If you loved every second of it, why well, did that you was, stop? That was the thing. It was it was it became, I always equated to a uh, having a relationship. Um, Having a, a like a really passionate relationship to where the sex is great, it's just so good. But sometimes you just fucking hate that person, right? And mm-hmm. it's like, and it's like I can't. And because my relationship with stand up was like that, I would leave, 
and then I would come right back because it was just so good. And I would leave and come back. And I said, I'm going to know when, I, when it's time for me to leave, when I leave, and I don't want to come back. Mm. And I did that. We, I think Ellis and I did a set in Alaska. I did an hour. Oh I did, God, yeah, I, did, God I, I remember that. I did like 45 minutes or an hour or something. And it was my last time doing it. And I said, uh, yeah, I think I'm done. And yeah. I think it's also because the reason why it was because I never, the other times I never had another outlet. I didn't have anybody else like to where I was trying to get the creativity out. I didn't have a YouTube channel. I didn't have, you know, as much as I can't stand it, didn't Twitter or, or, or a podcast. I didn't have any of that stuff. And when that stuff started to come in, I didn't need it as much anymore the way that I needed it beforehand. Plus, like I said, the family and everything too, it's just, it, it's, it's a lot of, it's, it, it, I didn't want to half ass it. That was the main thing. I didn't want to just say, I didn't, I don't want to be one of these comedians. It's like, oh, he's, he's in tonight, but you, you know, you'll see him another three weeks or maybe like a month. It's like either go for it or don't do it. Hmm. Would you trade the, all the success that you've had with the schmoes, uh, with the schmo down and schmoes in general for a very successful stand up career? It's hard to say. Uh, uh, no, because it's a great question. Yeah, I don't know. I, no, because if that was the case, then I would have done it. Because, you know, I, I, and this is not, it's not to be cocky or arrogant. Like, I, you know, when you just, when you know you, you, you have, you could have done it. I could have. Yeah. And I, yeah. I had, I had, I knew it wasn't one, I never doubted myself as a comedian. Like, I was, I became a comedy star regular. I was at the improv, I did colleges. Like, I was, I was doing well. And if I would have, especially with social media, the way that I use social media and the way that I always understood it and, and we're able to, to do things like it was like the boom of social media really happened in between like 2000, even the YouTube came out in 2005, the boom really started between like 2009 until now. That's mm-hmm. when, and I was at a comedy by 2009. Like I could have used comedy and podcasting and everything to really build up my stand up for sure. And I would have, and because that's a lot of times, that's why you get these big booms in the comedy store and now improv because podcasting brings in more of an audience. I mean, shit, look at the Schmodown, right? We get, yeah. we get so many people coming because of our shows and, and I, it's like, if I wanted to, I, Ellis has been asking me to get back into stand up for five years. He really wants you to? Yeah. How come? Because he knows that I could, that I could do it if I wanted to. And but he, does he, is he asking you because he thinks that's what you want? No, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't pressure me by any means, but he always, he like, he always like lovingly says like, oh, I got, I got, I got 10 minutes for it if you want it. Every single time, every single time. There's not one time that he's never said let you know it's there if you so want. So do you think it's because it's so available to you still that you don't? Um, no, because I mean, it's if you if you want. I mean, like when I went back to the comic, the biggest the biggest like if you're gonna look at it like an ex drug addict, right? Um, biggest time I almost fell off the wagon was when I went to Mitzi's. Um, I don't want to say funeral, but like celebration at the comedy store. I saw all the people that I came up with at the comedy store. I was talking to all my friends at the comedy store. And, um, and yeah, so when I was there, uh, that's when I left and said, I don't know. I, I feel like I could do this one more time. What are you looking up over there? Oh, I'm looking at questions for people. Yeah, so just, oh, uh, good. Yeah, I, I want to make sure that that's we... That's what I was curious about. Yeah. I do yeah. want to get to some of those, but bef- right before we do... Yeah, I, yeah, please. So you, you gather some of those, Riley, mm-hmm. while I... I figured. Uh, while I... Uh, Refresh your memory a little bit on a couple other stories uh-huh. that people sent I, to me. I thought, I got, oh, I, thought I got off no, the hook. I get, know. You didn't get off the hook. Oh, because that's why you're looking at me. Yeah. I yeah, teased this on is. a previous uh, Collider Live episode. There's a uh, something to do with you always carrying our recorder around, I hear. The recorder. Yeah, the recorder. The All right. So this is what happened. So, and I, I have no problem telling the story because it's, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's a funny story. I was so my my ex roommate and I we we lived together and he I mean he was he he the guy man when it came to women he was he was you know yeah wings he he could he could make he could make it happen he said the same thing about you <laughs> but he he could make it happen those two were trouble and so I was downstairs watching something and as I'm downstairs and I had and I so I would always carry around because like I said my my process for stand up comedy was. I would either smoke a joint or whatever too, and I would walk around my living room and I would just talk into the tape recorder. So I'm downstairs watching something, Sopranos, whatever it was, and this racket starts coming from upstairs, and it is loud between the two of them, like screaming and, and moaning. And I'm like, this is, I'm like, you don't do that to somebody when you're sitting on the couch trying to watch television. What are they supposed to do? Tone it down. Okay. Do you know someone's in the house? Tone Did, it down. Do you think she knew? 
I I don't know if she knew. If she, she was knew. following his lead. I think so. Maybe, okay. But they had to know when I was there because I think they might have even seen them. But but I don't remember. All I know is I'm just like I'm going to show this motherfucker how loud this is. Yeah. And he's I'm going to show him tomorrow. So I recorded it. Right. And the next day, like she she sounded she she was doing her thing. She was fine. But him. <laughs> uh, 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 and I'm like that's what that that's that's why you don't want to be loud. And because you, you played it to him as revenge, like yeah, don't do this and to me again. And his, and his, yeah, and his silly ass, he just started laughing. And, and for the next two weeks, we would stop and go. It's amazing. Yeah, and that was it. A- this is a question I've always had, and you just said, if somebody else is in the house, don't be loud. What do you do when you have kids? Um, you try to yeah. You well, the good news is that my my oldest my oldest sleeps through everything, so it's just we're we're good. Um, the youngest, uh, you know, also wakes up at everything. So you just got to be, you just, the answer is cautious. You got to okay. be cautious. And like lock cautious. the door really quiet. Go in the living room. Really? You, know, you have to, you have to do whatever you got to do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. And then the other, uh, and then I'll let you off the hook and go to those. The other question I have for you yeah. is, uh, I heard that you get really tired sometimes that sometimes, uh, you, you have long sets, and uh, you may or not be really tired in some promiscuous situation. And pass out in the middle of something. Is, <laughs> yeah. that, is that what you're saying? I know who you're talking about, and, <laughs> and, and that person, that person is telling a false story. Um, a falsity. False story. The 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 story that this person is saying is that like we were both kind of hammered, um, did what we had to do. We went home, um, fell asleep. And then when I woke up, other things were happening. That's all I'll say. Oh. And and she makes it seem that <laughs> I like it happened it. during it. All right, Riley, you you uh, take us to something well, else. Well, that's <laughs> that sounds you weird. Really, okay. you, really, you really did your reporting. I did. I I dug and I dug. Yeah. Uh, I like this question here. Let me go find it again. Uh, from Tim Kasakuba. If you had a million dollar donation for the Schmodown, what would you do immediately with it? A uh, million dollar donation. I'll tell you that right now. I'd get my own building. Mm-hmm. Um, that we could rent for sure. I would buy my own equipment, put a new set together. Uh, I would hire some production people, and I would start. And I would really start us moving. I, that, I, that's exactly how much I would need to start the uh, yeah. to start the the, the swim down for a year. So if you have it, please send it. Yeah. Do- donation and would say, be pretty nice too. That's yeah. not even a loan. That's, that's right. not an investment. It's, <laughs> a, no, donation, it's so a donation. So free and clear, please. Uh, Paul Reaper, what would you consider to be your proudest achievement in the professional life? Professional life. Okay. Yeah, is it that takes, that takes away my kids and my wife. Is it, yeah. He knew you'd um, say that. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I got to tell you, it's selling out a thousand seats in Chicago to to watch uh, a movie trivia show is 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 pretty is, was pretty cool. And also, but I, although as much as I loved that, going home to New York um, in front of uh, like almost four hundred people to walk out on that stage in New York to bring the show there and to sell out in two days that was pretty cool. Hopefully again. Yeah. Hopefully again. Hopefully again. I'm seeing we're getting the red light. I think that yeah. probably means we well, they can told ask. Us, yeah, they told us we can go into, Cody, they told us we can go until 2.30. Is that not true anymore? Yeah, no one told me that, so I apologize. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Riley, other ones in there? Uh, there's, yeah. I've got, I've got one from Chris Please, Woodburn uh, who said, how did your first time go with a lady? Oh, that, it was with the, it was with the, uh, the ex that left. Really? Yeah, Did um, you guys plan it? Was it all flowers and roses and no, candles? No, it was just kind of in her room. Her parents were home. You're talking about the cheater, right? No. Yes. Okay. Her, her parents, parents were home. Her parents huh? were home. Yeah. First time. My, and, my uh, first time as well. Yeah, it was just yeah, like parents one of were the, downstairs. It's just one of those things. Just kind of when uh, it was. It was nothing. It was nothing too exciting. So not prepped. Not really. No. Were you nervous? I mean, sure, a little bit too, and I think also because I think I think that yeah, you know, she didn't think that I was that it was my first time. You so, lied. I think so. Yeah, I did. Because because you were embarrassed, or you just wanted her to feel. I wanted to feel like I knew what I was doing. How old were you? Fifteen. So when do your memories start? Because you said, but I said, prior but to I 12. said, no, I said right around. I think, I think between probably like eleven, ten, maybe ten or eleven. So there's a lot of things that I remember that this, yeah. Are you? concerned now that you have two daughters thinking about that the the next phase of their lives the dating phase yeah i'm not yeah that's i try to i i i always give myself i'm like well i still got i still got at least five to to seven years to where i gotta worry about that with the oldest so i'm still i'm just enjoying her her the her innocence of youth before i have to worry about any of that shit what kind of dad are you gonna be i don't know 
I really don't know. I mean, part, I mean, I just, I just, I think that what I want to tell myself the way that I'm going to be is that as long as she makes good decisions with good people, I, n- I never want to be one of these strict fathers that says like, you can't date, you can't do this, because that makes it worse. Oh, they double down. They double down. It makes it worse. Um, but I will also be the type of like, that's the schmuck, this guy. Okay. I'm like, come to on. To be honest about it. Yeah, I'm like, this, uh, you deserve better than this character. Yeah, you're going to bust those guys' balls, too. Probably. Oh, I can picture yeah. them walking in, and you're going to be like... Yeah, well, you know, like, uh, St. Alan's still 101. Yeah. Yeah, come on. It's like, <laughs> just picture you. It's like, yeah. what are your intentions? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Riley, if you've got something, go ahead and ask them. Otherwise, I've got more, too. Uh, I'm trying to find a good one because I feel like we've kind of roundabout yeah. answered some of these. Well, going back to the Schmodown, um, I think this one's kind of cool with Exile Photography. He wants to know what your end game is for the yeah. Schmodown. Do you have an end game? No, and I think if you have an end game, then that's when you're in trouble. Um, yeah. there shouldn't be an end game. It's got. It should be the the fact that it's it's just the answer is expansion, expansion, expansion. It's like taking it like and it goes back to the donation question is that I need. I need my own space. I need my own. I need my own place to do to do it. I need. I need to to grow farther, farther, further. That's why I tell people so much how how important the Patreon is. Like you know, it's like people don't understand that that's it's. And I think that more people understand now that Patreon is more like a subscription service than anything else too. Especially for what, what, what we do mm. and how important it is for us. And the live events have certainly helped to be able to bring on more people and we're able to. The crew has gotten larger. There's been a lot, like, you, the, the new things we're able to do with it. But the end game is to, there's, like, again, not an end game, but just uh, it's expansion. It's, it's being able to make more leagues, more, um, you know, like, I, I want to do. A, what do you a, mean more leagues? Like, like, more, like, like the WWE uh, wrestling trivia, right? Like a wrestling trivia league, a sports trivia league. TV trivia. All of it. Like, is it all about finances? It's all about finances because you need to, because I want to be able to go out and license it to places and be able to. You know, to do bigger things with it, and you just it, the word needs to get out more. You have had so many different career changes. Do you feel like this is the last one? Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think people have said it too. I, I look for ways out all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, like I always look for ways out because it's like I there's out of the spa- entertainment, yeah, out of the digital out space, of the space in general. But it's like you know the the the. The I just uh, if, if I could just do Schmodown full time, that's all I would do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not looking for a way out. That's well, and then you know eventually, uh, I, no, it's not. But it, uh, like I said, but if it does, like I always say to myself, well, if Schmodown doesn't work out, maybe I can just move to I don't know somewhere else and just try to find a job there. But I can't. I don't know what to do. Would you mm-hmm. be? happy living with your wife and your kids going back to either New York or I don't know San Francisco or Seattle or something yeah. or rural go to like Montana, sure, Montana to just sure. work in a general store yeah no. See, yeah. that's the thing it's, it's everything was yes up until the end yeah it's like I need to be doing something that I'm happy doing mm-hmm. like working I have to and does that have to be entertainment I, right now, it's I feel like it's only. I mean, it's sad, but I feel like it's the only thing that I know I know what to do. Why is that sad? I don't know. It's just you feel like it's, it's like a pretty big space. It is, but you feel like that's the only thing that you know. You, there are people right now who are who are saving people and and being mm-hmm. able to. I see what you, you know. Mean. What I mean, like there's like there's somebody like a guy doing brain surgery right now, and I'm just like, oh, I don't know what to do if I can't talk into a microphone. <laughs> but what are you gonna? Are you? Have you really thought about? I don't know. Going back to school and get and figuring out how yeah, to do something else. Going back to school. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. It's. Just, I think sometimes. What could I find if I went to if I if I lived in Florida to be around my mom and my dad and my my brother with my kids? Could I? Find, they live in Florida. Yeah. Wow. Like, could I find a job <laughs> out there that would do? Because the thing is, if I have if I make the same amount of money that I make today here, I could buy a pretty nice house. In Florida, you can't buy shit here. No, you can't it's buy. You can't buy anything here. No, um, you can't rent anything here. You can't do. You can't. It's so expensive for uh, like. There, there's a. We were watching this show the other day. My wife was watching. I remember. I think it was Virginia or something. This house, it's a huge house, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. You can't buy a homeless person's cardboard box out here for two hundred seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars. It's. It is. It is ridiculous. The real estate out here. So, so you really do think about moving, leaving? I, yeah, but it's just I don't know. But I, but I, you know, what am I going to do if I go to Tampa, work on a news station? I don't, I don't well, know. Well, if Schmodown goes well, do you have to live in Los Angeles? Not necessarily, but that's 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 the that's the magic trick. It's just like you know, it's it's beyond frustrating because like you know you know when you have something, you know when you get it. And it's like 
there are, and it's one of the frustrating things, let's say for like the, uh, the Schmozno channel. Like we knew that we were going to maneuver it over to from the movie reviews into the Schmodown channel. There was going to be some pushback. Now the, the, the audience itself that watched Schmodown, they came over and they stayed and they watched it, right? Mm-hmm. But then it's so frustrating to me. Like it's one thing if I would get in the comments like, oh man, you know, the reviews, they used to be here and now I tried to watch this stuff and I just can't watch it. I'm out. But people don't even to some of the people who they didn't even try, and it's yeah. like and they just and it's like you, you try to grow it, and it's, I realize I gotta get I gotta find whether it's a publicist or I gotta find someone to expand the because the audience who's watching really gets it and mm-hmm. understands it, and it's and it's the hardcore audience is the strongest it's ever been. Um, it's expanding that audience outward that we need to do more of. So eventually, yeah, I could do something like that because we're doing we're doing the best that we've ever done you know as far as monetizing the showdown to be able to bring more people into it but in order to really expand that i just we just need we need more this is something you wouldn't have to be in la for this is coming from uh marcus brown house targaryen mm-hmm. tough house to be a part of right now right, yeah. uh Oof. i've got a fun one christian if you could write slash direct one star wars film what would the story be and who would be the star uh, Darth, Bane. Darth Bane. I mean, Darth Rule Bane. I would. I would take it from. Uh, I would make sure that Drew Carpetian helped me adapt the script, and I would get uh, Kevin Durand to uh, to play Darth Bane. Okay. That's good. It seems that's like you've good. thought about that before. Yeah, that's something I think that, I think that would work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some more questions in here uh, yeah. coming from. At, I'm loving these guys, by the way. Thank you for them. <clears throat> at Connor underscore Dunlavy says, "What's been your biggest challenge career-wise?" Never, never, never being satisfied with anything. So yourself, you are your yeah. biggest challenge. Yeah, never being satisfied with anything. I just feel like it's just like constantly feel like I'm chasing that that horse. That it, it, it's right there. I grab it. I'm about to get on top of it, and it just kicks me off again. And I just gotta. It's every single time. I just feel like you're you're getting there, but you're just not there. Right. Uh, yeah, I got one here from Moonwalker. Uh, real talk here. If you win the lotto. What would you do with the money, and would you still expand your brand, or would you retire, or something else? Depends on how much it is, right? I mean, the the first. Let's talk about the lotto that that everybody lost their mind over. That's right. what. I would I would want to build over out over a hundred million. Yeah, well, I'd, want, I'd want to put the money in, into the Schmodown to to watch it become what I know it can become. So if you yeah. had enough money to live for the rest of your life, and your kids could have money too, you would still. I would put money away for them. Okay, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I and I. Get my wife the house that she wants, deserves, um, deserves, and then um, See, you know, training you. take care of my take care of my family in Florida. But then I would put the money into the Schmodown, let it build, see what it was a particular bit of money to make to see what what could work, and then if it didn't, then I would retire and live in Hawaii. Okay, yeah, probably Maui. Uh, like yeah. This is kind of a fun one. I'm, I don't know if you have an answer, but from. Uh, Shannon at Super Shanko says, "What's one bad movie you would never let your kids see if you I could help that. it? Not so much rated R, but just an awful movie in general." Shit, what's an awful movie that, <laughs> that they should never watch? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's on the spot. I gotta. For now, you get Caddyshack to... Two. Oh. Yeah, Caddyshack Two is pretty so bad. Your, your daughter comes to you and is like, it's "I want to watch bad. Caddyshack Two. No, like, go play outside." Yeah. This is a question for me, just yeah. because you've gotten to talk to so many people. I, I, I can't imagine that you have one, but is there somebody you haven't interviewed who's still living that you are just dying to get? Julia Roberts. Yeah. I mean, I met her. Well, at least you got a selfie with her. I got a selfie with her, but I'd love to I'd love to sit down. I mean, if I could have an hour with her, I don't know if I'd survive it, but I could I could definitely. What do you mean? Heart attack? Yeah. She's she's the she's the one that it's just like, yeah, she's she's there's something about her. Like, she don't you don't make movie stars like that anymore. Yeah, they just don't. That's very true. Yeah. So. I, f- I feel like I feel like she would be so happy to have you interview her because of the kind of respect you have for her. Yeah, I'm sure it would be a good conversation for sure. Yeah. Um Riley but you have such get a that you have such a brief. I want to know because yeah. the same thing too. This is so these are all the like this this is everything that you wanted to know from me? I have I've Don't asked worry about everything. The notes. No, no, it's not about the notes. It's me making sure that I ask them because I asked the fans right. if they have things that they wanted to know. But yeah, I pretty much, I got it. Um, okay. I got it, and I think that you've had quite the life, and I think that you're not uh, even close to done with what you're gonna do. Uh, well, if Roka gets his way, I'm gonna have a heart attack next week. 
<laughs> he said that on the show. Wait, last why week. did you say that? Roca, when Roca talked about, uh, he was talking about, I don't know how, how it came about, but he says, he, 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 saw, he was talking about remember. death. And Roca was talking about death, how he thinks about death all the time. He's like, yeah, he's like, you're, you're going to die of a heart attack. You do too much. Do you feel like there's something big I'm missing? Is there something that the world so. doesn't know about you? No, I just knew that you wanted to. Uh, you got you. Got, I think if you got everything that you wanted to know, sure. I was cur- first time we met was 2014. We got along pretty much the first time we met, right? Yeah, because I had already gone through Ken, who I was right. not getting along with. Right. I had yeah. to be nicer to you. You're right. Uh, you weren't getting along with Ken. I was so, no, yeah. I was not. She didn't like us. The Wait, schmoes. There's more questions in oh, here. I okay. can't ask yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, please, please. And then I know, I know, we'll have to go. We pretty have. Soon. Yeah. What do we yeah. have? We have like we ten have minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes. All right. But here we go. Uh, question from Justin Square: Are you or have you ever been afraid of failure, and how do you handle that? Uh, I've yeah. never heard you talk about it before. About failure? Yeah, I've never heard you talk about that. I mean, yeah, of course, all the time. I mean, it's that's that's the main that's the main thing. It's because you have to be afraid of failure, otherwise you can't face failure. Because it happened. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, like whether it's through stand up or because it, I feel a lot of the times, and I, I feel like I feel like I miss my opportunity all of the time. All of the time, I feel like things. Looking back, you feel that way, or all the time. I feel like for some reason, and again, whether it's a "woe is me" thing or whatever it is, too, I feel like there are times that just the stars are aligned. When they're not aligned, that's when everything goes great. And like, for example, I remember I did a set one night. And I crushed 150 people, just great. Not one person in there that could further my career at all, right? But who cares? Everybody was rolling on the floor. It was amazing. The next night, I do a set at this place. It was called um, the Derby, and it was. Do you remember the Derby out in uh, like it's like Silver Lake type thing? Silver. In the, uh, where is that? Uh, Los Feliz. Yes, Los yeah, Feliz. I remember the, the Derby. The Derby. It's where they film swingers for the big dance. So stuff I'm up at the stage. End. And that's right. And I'm up at stage, and I have a set, annihilate. This guy, and I'm outside. I'm just kind of walking because it was it was just felt so good. So I start walking down the street, and this guy comes running out. He goes, "Ah, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere." And he's this big agent. He was a big agent, and he was like, "You have something I haven't seen in a long time." He goes, "I represent big com- X Y Z, big comedians," and he's like, "You are my next guy." Mm. You're my next guy. He goes, call me tomorrow or Monday. Call me on Monday, and we're going to meet him. The guy was hammered out of his face, <laughs> didn't, remember the fo- the com- didn't remember the conversation. I called three times during the week. They were like, and I was like, he, I was like, this guy doesn't remember the conversation. And he was like, because he gave me the phone number to, it was, it, I got to his office, you know, right to his office. And they're like, uh, what is this regarding? Like, we met at the derby the other night. He said to call him. He's like, oh, and then again the second time. What is this regarding? He does not remember. I'm what like, a putt. yeah, but I'm just like fucking. It was like it's, it, it was just it wasn't about him. It was the fact that this kind of then same type of thing happened. I went up to the improv one night, had an amazing set, brought the house down. Nobody's there. Next night, I have an all right set. I missed. I was I was tired. I had I missed some things. The Montreal P- F- Comedy Festival people were there that night, and it's just and again it's on. And this is the thing that I tell everybody. It is on nobody except me. Mm. I should have been better that night. I should have, you know, it's like even on on the, on the drunk guy, you know what? Maybe I should have done something else to make him remember me. Whatever it is, it's always on you. You can blame people for all the things that go wrong, but it's always on you. So I'm not saying like, oh, my God, I wish this would have happened because God, why wasn't anyone there that night? It, the night that they were, I didn't deliver. So I just feel a lot of those times like that happens continuously. Just I feel like that it continuously happens to me, and I feel like one day I'll catch that fucking horse. Yeah, I have a couple other things that you just reminded me of that I've always been wanting to ask mm-hmm. you. Uh, sorry to the Facebook people. I'm not going to get into a ton of your questions, but yeah. my time. Uh, <laughs> you just mentioned the way you're talking makes me think about like what's above, what's out there. And we've talked about religion sometimes on the show and yeah. how you were raised. But do you have a relationship with God? Do you believe? I love this. In God, do you not, or do you not talk about it on air? No, I'll talk about it on air. It's, um, it's, uh, it's. I think I'm more spiritual than anything else too, because I, and I, I think I've said this. Um, I think I'm more of a, um, yeah, more agnostic than anything else too, right? I think that Which means you just don't know. I just don't know. Um, I feel like there's something out there, and I feel like, and I, I do pray, you know, and, and I feel like it's helped a lot of times, and I don't know. But I, I just, I can never say, like, I know. Like, there are people who say, like, no, no, I have a relationship and I talk 
to God, and that's good. I'm glad that you do. But I don't know. It's just, I, and I, I also know that the the universe is just too big to say like, again, I know what's out there. When you die, you die, because you don't know that. You don't know, and because I, because my the biggest thing I I believe in is is like time, like space, time, and all that, and what happens in parallel universes, what happens in all these, like, like, you know, where all, like, it's so open that there's so much stuff out there that we don't know about, Mm -hmm. that you couldn't possibly know about, that our brains don't comprehend at all, that I am, to be honest, like, curious about. Like, you know, I wonder, like, what, like, where did my brother go? Did he just go? What do you think? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I like to believe that he got, he gets to live in a pa- more pa- a different parallel universe to where he's really happy. That's my that's what I wish. Or I wish that I he like just, that. yeah. I mean, that's 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 kind of what I because if you listen to scientists and you say that parallel universes are so are infinite and that if there's any type of possibility that of what you could be doing where there's a the universe where you don't exist and there's a universe to where you decided you weren't going to work here or there's a universe where you became a famous singer whatever it might be there's that if it's out, if it's a potential it's happening in, in some kind of timeline um i don't know what dreams are are yeah. dreams a portal to those to those universes are dreams just part of things that happen inside of your your head that you're because there's some things that happen inside of my head in dreams that i'm like how could i possibly even think that i'm like i don't right. even like you know it's just this weird stuff so i, I don't know i don't know i don't know how to explain it do you, when you mention your brother, do you think that uh, somehow, I know you don't know, but do you think that he can see you? Yeah, I mean, I don't believe in psychics, right? I, I mean, my mom and my, my brother, I think they went to see one, and um, and they said some they said some things that the psychic said that made me go, you know, because it was, it was stuff that... Mediums, you mean? People who are speaking yeah, yeah, to... Yeah, 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 mediums. Um, and I just... Uh, there were certain things that I, st- like, you know, my mom told me about, and I was like, well, it's definitely the way that I was feeling, but I just also, I don't know, I don't know how much access this person, does this person ever hear me, did I say this on the air? You know, did I, did I, did they look into my Facebook? I, I don't know, but uh, I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure. When you're, when you're praying, are you talking to somebody, or? Yeah, I think that I, I, I acknowledge God, yeah. um, too, because I think that, for as long as I've been, I've been making sure that I pray for a very long time. Um, Are you talking years? Yeah, I mean, I, for as long as I can remember. Down on your knees, hands. No, your... it's more like you know, I, 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 I think it's just more. I always cross myself, you know, and, and but I just, I feel, I don't feel like you have to be heard out loud or anything too. I think if there's this all powerful being, you can think it. He knows what he knows. He or she mm-hmm. knows what's going on. What do you teach your kids? Um, not much, to be honest with you, when it comes to, in general, I don't teach them anything. <laughs> but as far as religion goes, um, I think that it's, well, they're both baptized. Um, so, and is, is uh, not, not much. Not, uh, you know what's funny about my wife is that initially, no, but I think more and more she's she's kind of tapping into, um, like wanting to learn more about Jesus and, and things to it as far as Christianity goes. And, um, and uh, it's, uh, so I shouldn't say I shouldn't say not much. That's not true because my my sister in law is very religious, and has had conversations with my daughter about religion. So, but um, but no, I mean I th- I think religion is very I think as much as religion is a cause for a lot of bad, religion is also a cause for a lot of good and a lot of spiritual um, um enlightenment for a lot of people to where it's 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 a positivity for a lot of people too. So I I, I never I never jump into the let's bash religion thing because I think there's there's way there are a lot of things that religion have done to look at there's a lot of people who have been lost and they found they found the light through religion right mm-hmm. now whether I, I just don't like when people find it and then tell you you need to do this too right. and because I feel like God's doing this and God's telling you like it, what's good for you is good for you and it should stay good for you that's kind of how I always, how I always felt I think that a a question that I get all the time is like, what has been the most helpful thing for you? Because for anybody out there who is struggling with loss or confusion of what does happen after somebody passes, where are they? Where do they go? Uh, People will ask me, what has been 
a helpful thought? Do you have something that you go back to or that you rely on anytime? Because obviously it's a very dark um, yeah. moment of your life. Is there something that you can advise people who are struggling with that? Um, I mean, it really depends on the relationship you had also with uh, with the loved one. But I mean, it's, it's just connecting to something that you know was something that was there for you and and the loved one or or memories. Um, there are certain songs I listen to. I listen to. I mean, I get. It. I, I'm lucky enough to where I have a lot of my brother's music, so I listen to his music. Um, but there's a song, Greg Laswell, I believe is his name, the 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 musician, and he has a song uh, named uh, High and Low. And I listened to that song, and it, uh, and I listened to it on the plane on the way back to Florida when I found out, and it it, it leveled me, but it also it also allowed me to go through a lot to to kind of process it. Okay. Yeah. I hope people go find that song then. Yeah, yeah. they should. I think that's it, guys. That's it. Yeah, we're at cool. two thirty on the dot. Two thirty on the I dot. I learned more. But I, I still know I have more questions for y'all. Yeah. I have you on Collider Live though, so we'll you get do. To some things. Yeah, we can get some more. Sorry. So that's the uh, that's the show for today. Collider Live. Wow. Big interview here with myself and uh, Roxy and, and Mark Riley. We are back on Monday, but if you're gonna be looking for this show on this channel, you are doing yourself a disservice. You have to go on over to the Collider Live YouTube channel, subscribe there. All of the show, the weekly show, the daily show, it will be on this channel as well as the pieces that we put up there. So go on over there, subscribe. Apple Podcasts will be the same, Stitcher, Spotify, all the same as far as audio. But Collider Live, the channel. Thank you to Roxy Stryer and Thanks Mark Riley. Thank and you. And we'll talk Mark. to you next time.